At one point or another, when you're working on your websites, you're going to run into an issue where everything is looking not too bad. Uh, but if you have a large enough screen size and you decide to make it a little bit bigger, uh, you might not be too happy with how things look when you get to these larger sizes and everything just stretches the whole way across the page. This looks kind of terrible right now. <laughs> and it makes it really hard to read long paragraphs where you actually have to like turn your head a little bit as it's going and the bigger you make it, the worse it gets. So how can we limit the total size? It's not too complicated. But what we want to do is we're going to create a new class for this. And there's two names that are sort of the industry standard at this point. Uh, I'm going to come down to where I have my section here and sort of, it's a little bit of a generic thing. So I'm going to include it right here. I'm going to do wrapper. And the wrapper is what I've been calling it most recently. I used to actually call this a container and I'm putting the dot in front because this will be a class. And container is the more common name for this when you're out in the wild. So I do want to talk about both of them. The thing is in modern CSS, there's a new feature that was added called the container query. We're not going to be covering that right now, uh, but because we have container queries that create containers, having a container class to me that doesn't have anything to do with container queries just seems like it's opening the door up for potential confusion down the line. So instead of calling this container, I'm calling it wrapper, but I just want to make it really clear that you might've already seen this previously with container, or if you run across a container in the future, the names are basically interchangeable. But I wanted to explain why I use the name wrapper. And then on my wrapper here, I can come in with an inline size. And again, you might see this as a width instead of inline size. This is the logical property though, and what I would encourage you to use. And for now, I'm gonna say an inline size of 1000 pixels. And what that's gonna do is we're creating something that's gonna prevent our content from being wider than a thousand. And I might reduce that a little bit for the demo because of the screen recording I'm doing, but we'll try this out. And I'm gonna go over to my index and I'm gonna come all the way up to the top. And just so you know, this is going to work because the layout that I'm creating that looks like this, where I want all of my content from, we haven't done the logo and navigation yet, but all the way down, we're all holding it within a set size. Sometimes you might have backgrounds or other things that expand out, so you have to organize things a little bit differently in those cases. But for now, the simplest thing to do, right after my body, I'm gonna come in with a div class is equal to wrapper. And I don't wanna close my wrapper right away. So then I'm gonna come all the way down to the very bottom, right before I close my body, and I'm gonna close that div. And then I'm just gonna move that over. I'm actually gonna go all the way back up, hold shift to select everything, and then push tab, just so my indentation is good as well. And then I'm gonna refresh my page. And now, if I go bigger, oh, look at that. Isn't that better? We're not getting too wide anymore. We're now preventing the content from escaping that, and it holds everything. It makes my paragraphs so much more easy to read. But because we have that wrapper on there that's a thousand pixels wide, if I come and I go smaller than that, now this is happening where we end up with some side scrolling. And that is not a good thing. We do not want that to happen, uh, especially with the amount of people using mobile phones and all of that m aging myself there, calling it a mobile phone, I think. But uh, everybody coming in with their other devices that have smaller screen sizes. And just to highlight a little bit of what this wrapper is doing, let's come in and add a border. Do not put borders on these normally, uh, but I'm going to do a five pixels. Uh, let's do it as a dashed red, just to have something a little bit different. So we can actually see the way that that's holding all of our content and it's preventing the other content from getting any bigger, which again is exactly what we want, but we don't want that to happen when we get to these smaller sizes over here, because then it's still that big. So to be able to solve this, Instead of doing an inline size, I'm gonna switch this very simply over to a max inline size. And I'm gonna refresh, and look, it fixed the problem. You can see right away that it's been fixed. If I go larger, it will not get bigger than 1,000 because we have a max inline size, and if you're using the non-logical property, that would just be a max width. And then as I come down this way, it's allowed to still get smaller the way it was already doing before. Is Let's remove this, refresh, it was already doing this before. You can see here, everything was working before. And this is where I mentioned earlier, and this is why I always talk about how the default behaviors of everything are really good. And I don't wanna fight against the default behavior. I want to embrace the default, which was working fantastically well. I just wanna go, okay, this is working great. I love the default behavior up until a certain point. And then I'm gonna put a limitation on how big things can get. So I'm not fighting against what the browser is doing. I'm just saying, 
okay, that's good except for let's stop this one thing. So max inline size means that it's all working, but we've just hit a maximum total size here. Now, when we have a maximum total size, that helps a lot. We can actually read our text. It makes the website look more and very typical to have these types of things there. But usually most websites, when they do this, also center that content on within the viewport once we've hit that maximum. So to be able to do that, what we'll do is we'll shrink this back down right here. And right here where we have this, and I'm gonna add in a margin and I want it on the left and the right side. So that's my inline that I'm gonna be using. So it's my inline axis. The thing is how big do we wanna make it? And I've seen a lot of people who will have like, they'll be working with the browser at a very specific size on their screen. So then they magic number it. Don't do this, but <laughs> just to highlight what some people will do is they look at it and they go, what if it's 50 pixels? And then they look at it and they go, it's not quite centered. So then you say 70 and you try 70 and you're getting closer, maybe 75. Oh, that looks pretty good. That looks like it's centered left and right and they're, they're really happy with it, but then they go larger and, oh no, that didn't work. And then you go smaller and then uh, the smaller one actually, it's working because it's 75 on both sides, so it's not the end of the world. But at larger sizes, all of a sudden we go off center again, which wasn't what they were trying to do. Uh, and there's actually a really easy way to do this with CSS, and it just is to put in an auto keyword here. So margin inline or a margin left and a margin right, uh, of auto. And if I refresh that now, as I get smaller, it's still gonna work the same way it was working before. But when we go to these larger sizes, once we hit that maximum size, the auto keyword is just saying distribute the leftover space equally amongst the left and the right side, and it centers our content perfectly on the page. And of course, with this, we wanna get rid of our border that's on here, because that doesn't look very good. Uh, and yeah, that's it. That's all there is to centering content nice on the page that will work at large screen sizes and not cause any responsive issues when you're getting to smaller sizes. Now, the one question I do get whenever I show something like this is why am I doing that on my wrapper and putting my wrapper as the very first thing on the body here or inside the body, I should say, and then going all the way down to the bottom and then having it right close right here, right before the end of the site. If I'm doing that, why don't I remove it from here and then go all the way up here and remove that from here and then come into the style here. And instead of doing this on the wrapper, why don't I just put this on the body, right? Just limit the size of the body. And in this case, I actually get the exact same result I had before. I've, there's literally no difference. Uh, and so if you ask yourself that, why you wouldn't want to do it that way, you're, you're actually right. Or there was a small difference. We've lost some of the spacing on the edge. We're not going to worry about that right now, but basically we've, we've got the same, the same type of result going on. The reason I don't want to do that is because this is much less versatile and in general layout things. I want to keep, I don't want to touch the body for layout reasons. And that's because what if I need one of these to be different and I need something to break out from my container. I need it to be wider. If I have this on the body, it becomes very hard to be able to do that because my body's holding everything. My body has to be the first thing that's open at the start and it has to be the last thing that's closing at the end for the things that are visibly on my screen. Whereas if I bring this back as a wrapper and I save that and then I bring back my wrapper here and I bring back my closing div at the end. So as an example of that, let's just say I wanted this to actually be a lot bigger than what it actually is. To be able to do that, what I would do is I wouldn't close my wrapper all the way at the bottom here. So I'm gonna remove that closing from there. We might have to change where the beginning one is. I'm gonna turn off word wrap here because uh, it's gonna make life a little bit easier to look at. And we'll head back up to where it's starting. And this one's okay to have here, but because then we go into the main and I can't close it inside of the main, what I'm actually going to do is close this one here. So we get a wrapper around my header. And then, and this is something that's really common when you have wrappers, and that's why a class is good for this, because you're gonna have them all over the place a lot of the time. And then inside my main, I can come in with a new one, div class equals wrapper, and I can close that. So I'm just gonna cut this to remove it. I'm gonna keep this section, or this is the one that has the teal BG in it. So I'm actually gonna close this one here. So that means we can select this, tab it over. So wrapper has my H1 in my image. Then we get a section over here. And for now, I'm actually gonna let the entire section go wide just so we can see how this is working. And then I'm gonna come down to this area here and I'm gonna put in a new div class is equal to wrapper. 
We're going to tab that over. So our spacing, oops. We're going to tab that one on over. So we go into here. I can grab the closing one, come all the way down to after this section. And now if I come in and refresh this, we suddenly get this going on where we have this is all within a wrapper. This isn't, so it's going full width. And then we get back into having this area down here that's in the wrapper, and then very common actually with the footer there stretching the full width that we have down at the bottom. And then we could do a little bit more work inside of here. And it, this is where definitely getting wrappers, you're opening, closing them all the time, like I just said. Uh, so on this one, we can go, well, I want to keep all of this text in there, but I don't want this div. I want to let that div expand out. So because of that, then we look inside of this section and we can come here and say this has a div class equals wrapper. And I can grab the closing div there. And so I want my wrapper to start there, but I want it to end before my teal BG. So I can paste that in and I can tab things over, refresh. And now that text is good. And then I go to here and I have this wide section. And maybe I want to keep the wide background, but I don't want to keep the wide text another wrapper, just wrappers within wrappers, or not within each other, but wrappers within sections and divs and everything. And I think this gives us a good example actually of how many wrappers and why, first of all, they're useful and how often you'll be using them and how you have to think about things a little bit as you're going through using these types of things. And then let's just tab this over and then select this and tab that over. So we have our background with the teal BG, then we have my wrapper, and then we close the teal BG. So that means the teal BG stays wide, but our wrapper inside there is holding all of our content. And I've set all of that up here, but of course I also have a second page. So if we go and take a look at the other page, everything is super wide there. So on that one, we won't do things too complicated, but we could just come once again, the way we originally did it, a div at the top class is equal to wrapper up here, grab that closing one, go to the very bottom of this page, I'm actually going to close it before my footer instead of after it, even though the design I'm working on doesn't call for that. Uh, but then we get this all coming in here. That's looking good. And then I get my footer uh, down at the bottom, which I just realized on the other page was probably off screen a little bit, but there we go, is coming and is full width uh, all the way down there at the bottom with the text being held there. You might want a wrapper inside of your footer if you did this. We don't have a lot of text, so it doesn't really matter. But if you had lots of text, another wrapper inside of there would probably be appropriate. And that is wrappers in action. And once again, a lot of the time those will be called containers. So go with the name that you prefer. Again, I prefer wrapper, but uh, yeah. And then just they wrap content, hold it, prevent it from getting too big, allow things to still get smaller.